Yo, yo, yo. Coming to you live from Philly. It's the number one rated Polly and Tony Fusco show. Yo, yo, yo. As always, Polly Fusco here with Tony Fusco and Tony. Yo. You know, the people out there, they've been waiting for this show, you know, badgering us. Where's the episode when you're yeah, going to talk sixes? Exactly. People hold your We horses. hear it nonstop. Yeah, we know. Yeah, exactly. Relax. Leave us alone. We'll get yeah, to you. Take it easy. You know, first of all, we hear you out there saying that, quote unquote, the sixes didn't show up in game oh. seven. People, if you want to see what not showing up looks like, go watch our last episode. Right, Tony? Yeah, exactly. Our guest is what they call a persona non gracias. Yeah, more like a non-guest. You know, hopefully our guest actually shows today because I actually want to speak to this guy, Tony. You yeah, know, me too. Now that Doc Rivers is gone from Philly, finally. Yeah. Adios. Like a fought in the wind. Yeah. Yep. Bonjour. We want to get some inside perspective today. So we're going to bring on this guy. He was on a team the year after Doc Rivers got fired. A uh, longtime NBA player, Catino Mobley, who was on the 2004 yeah, was Orlando Magic, as you remember, yeah. right after Doc got fired. Smart, and, you know, we're going to ask him straight up how much better things got in Orlando after they got rid of Doc. Yeah, it was just what the doctor didn't order. Good one there, Tony. And uh, Thank you. on the subject of making things better, it's time for a word from our newest sponsor, our good friends at the money saving app Upside. Do you like paying full price for things? Well, then you're a f-ing idiot. Yeah, on this Upside, you get discounts on gas and restaurant meals. The downside was, of course, your whole life before you started using this app, loser. Download the Upside app now and enter the promo code FUSCO for 50% off your first purchase. Offer only valid on the eastern shore of Costa Rica. Upside. Yeah, another Upside for us. Another check in the mail. Big big check there. Huge check coming. Let's go. People, as we said up top, they're they're surprised by the Sixers implosion. Well, we're not. Not us. And uh, that's why right now we're going to go over everything. We got 100% bang on the head as usual. It's one of our most popular segments where Paulie and Tony were right. Where Paulie and Tony were right. Well, Tony, just a terrible ending for an otherwise terrific Sixers season. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, when you look at what went wrong with this team, it's very oh, clear to see, you know. Heartbreaking. You watch that game seven, Joel Embiid and James Harden, they go for a combined eight for 29 from the field. A Horrible. pathetic 37% on shooting. Terrible. And when you break it down, there's one clear reason for that. Doc Rivers. Absolutely. You know, as a coach, you got to tell these guys, yo, stop missing shots. And Doc Rivers clearly didn't do that. Even if he could coach, these NBA coaching jobs, they're simple. All you got to do, if you're a coach, all you got to do is speak. That's literally it. Doc Rivers has had a 20-year case of laryngitis. He can barely make out a word this guy's saying. You know, he's more hoarse than American Pharaoh. Yeah, he is. How the hell could these players, how could they hear him in 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 an arena during a game? You know, if someone had just gotten him a Ricola or something, we'd be in the conference finals by now. Great point, Tony. Couldn't agree more. All right, Thank to the you. next thing we got right. Where Pauly and Tony were right. You know, another thing we said at the start of the season, we said this is not going to be the year for the Sixers. Yeah, and, we said uh, you it. Know, you can go back to our old episodes go and just listen, listen to, to the them tapes. just to prove it. Yeah, you know, yeah. drive up our ad revenue. Yeah, you know, get us that more check. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, anyway, you know, now James Harden himself is backing up exactly what we said. You know, these idiots, they want to ignore this, but he, he came full with the truth. You know, he this did. is his first full season with the team. And he explained the loss to the Celtics by saying, quote, we're only one year in. We played against the team who's been together for quite a few years now. Absolutely. That, Tony, that right there points out why the Celtics had an unfair advantage. You know, this is so true. Teams that have been together longer always have an advantage. Just look at the Warriors. Well, don't not that, but look at the no. Bucks for exi- uh don't look at that either. No. Look look at Denver. Denver, there you there go. You look go. at there them. There you go, Denver. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, this isn't just for sports, right, Tony? Nothing no. is ever good in the first year of anything, except this show it was great out the gate, you know, number one. But, exactly. you know, you see this, we see this in other areas, you know, like TV, right? 
Look at one of the all-time great sitcoms. Of course, I'm talking about Three's Company. Yep. In the first three seasons, there was no Don Knotts. They had Mr. Roper. Not funny. Not funny. But in season four, they brought in Don Knotts. Mr. And Furley. And the rest is television history. Just such a terrific example there, Tony, because Mr. Roper lasted three seasons as Doc Rivers lasted three seasons. Just, Absolutely. Just so great how you draw the comparison there for the audience. Thank you. All right, let's move to another big story out of the NBA. Where Pauly and Tony were right. You know, your people out there, you're going to say this doesn't count as a right because we didn't say it on air. But that's because we knew that the media, stupid media out there, yep, would twist our the work. worst. But exactly. you know what we got to do right now is we got to defend someone who is once again being unfairly attacked. Of course, yeah, we're we talking do. about Ja Morant, who yep. again for some reason is in hot water just for flashing a gun on Instagram. But, I don't get you know, it, Tony. This is ridiculous. Explain to the people why. You know, Ja Morant lives in Memphis. The team is called the Grizzlies. If you live in an area prone to grizzly attacks, then it would be stupid not to carry a gun. Yep. You know, frankly, when I saw the video, I was shocked because I thought he should be carrying something bigger, like a rifle or a bazooka or something. You ever see the movie The Relevant with Leonardo DiCaprio? That one scene, it's terrifying. Terrific point there, Tony. And you know, John Moran's critics out there, these idiots, you know, they're saying oh. uh, that this is not how a role model should behave. Uh, excuse me? Oh, yeah? Well, why don't you tell that to John Wayne? Yeah, a real Dirty man. Dirty Harry. Legend. Wyatt Earp. The best. Yeah. Yeah, great point. Where Pauly and Tony were right. All right, last one here. You know, we've been saying this for months, that Jalen Hurts should be the highest paid QB in the league. You know, you're probably no sick of us saying it because, you know, you agree with us and it makes you angry when we bring up yeah. that he's no longer the highest paid QB. You know, totally. now it's Lamar Jackson and, and apparently Patrick Mahomes, they say he's going to get a bigger contract. Though. Yeah, I heard that. But Tony, Jalen Hurts, he just did something to outsmart them all, didn't he? Yep, this is he always people. does. Yeah. Jalen Hurts went and received his master's degree from Oklahoma. And what so a move, smart. Tony, because what do we know about people with master's degrees? They earn much more than people with regular degrees. Yup, they do. And by my calculations, if Patrick Mahomes gets six hundred million, then you gotta give Jalen Hurts at least two billion. Such it's, a smart move yep. to get his masters. Exactly. You gotta yep. pay for that extra education. And uh, well, I'd love you to sure discuss do. this more, Tony. But guess what? In a in a change of pattern on this show, our guest has actually had the balls to show hey, up. Hey, all right. There we go. All right. So yeah, we let's go. go ahead and bring him on the Fusco Satellite Network. Fusco Satellite Network. All right, this guy, native son, born yeah. right here in Philadelphia, 12-year NBA vet. We couldn't be more proud of. Of course, so well, if he excited. played for the Sixers, we would have been proud of. Yeah, but we would have been much prouder. Great. Played yep. for the Rockets, the Magic, the Kings, the Clippers. Now he's on Fox Sports as an analyst, and he's also a motivational speaker. Wow, he terrific. He does a lot. Uh, anyway, let's bring him on. Katino Mobley, welcome to the show. Guys, how you doing, man? Hey, we're doing, doing great. Good. And, you know, Thank on the you. subject of how we're doing, you know, we know you had a bit of a heart condition. You know, that's yep. what caused you to retire from the league. You know, yep. you, we have a reputation, as you know. We can be tough on our guests. We're sometimes, very tough you know, we on get, our guests, but get we're going to go, go easy sometimes today. Sometimes guests get scared of coming on the yep. show. Some don't show up like yeah, last week. Yeah, sometimes they don't even we're show gonna, up. They're so scared. Yeah, we're going to go easy on you. We don't want to get you riled up. Okay? No, nope, we want the heart rate to stay low, blood pressure yeah. down. We need that. Okay, Yeah, good. exactly. Okay, so here's why we brought you on today. Obviously, you played for the Orlando Magic in 2004, the year after Doc Rivers got fired, of course. You know, in the last season that Doc was there, that team, they finished an embarrassing 21-61. and 61, but oh, then horrible. You, you came in, and so did their new coach, Johnny Davis. They improved to a highly respectable 36-46, and 46, which is good for the Magic, you know. Yeah. When you showed up, tell us, Katino, how relieved in the building were people that, you know, Doc was finally out of there. I don't know if they were relieved, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I uh 21 games uh the year prior 
And then uh, I actually didn't want to leave Orlando, but uh, I, I got into a little, you know, bump in the heads with uh, Johnny Davis. Uh, oh. When I left, we were top in, in, in Orlando. We were top in the East, uh, one of the top teams. And when I left, these guys didn't even make the playoffs. Oh, so right. it's, you, know, you made that tough. about yourself, which is good. Yeah. I like that. Good ego. Yeah. You, what was yeah. your beef with Johnny Davis? Yeah, what, what happened? What, was he worse than Doc Rivers? What was his no, problem? He, was he worse than Doc Rivers? <laughs> this guy. No, um, Doc wasn't bad. Listen, Doc's never coached me. I think Doc's a good dude. Uh, but says you, yeah, you know, says um, you. As far as um, Johnny, um, you know, he, Steve Francis and I were at that time, you know, ex, you know, backcourt of excitement for the NBA and you know the team that we had. I, I you know, I didn't want to share time with our rookies. And you know, the, the reason there was success on our team at the time I was there. You know, Grant Hill was coming off, you know, injury, and he's feeling better. Dwight Howard was a rookie. You yep. know, uh, yep. Turkoglu was coming off the bench. We had a nice little team. So, yeah. you know, he, he thought that the scheme and everything was his. And, you know, come to find out, the team broke up. You know, it's kind of like it just wasn't what it was when I left. So what you're saying there is that Johnny Davis is equally a shitty coach as Doc. Yeah, Rivers. just as that, much as Doc. It sounds like just so I follow. <laughs> yeah, that's what it sounded like. No, I, listen, I don't, I'm, all I'm saying is uh, we we didn't go to the playoffs that year. They didn't go to the playoffs that year. They all don't. Right, but you know, you know, just I have a question for you since you played the game. You know, Doc Rivers. He's had like a 20 year case of laryngitis. Yeah, he can't understand a word this <laughs> yeah, guy said. I can't talk. Tell me as a player, how important is it to actually be able to hear and understand your coach when he's talking? Uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, that's a good. There you, See, there go. you go. There's a good He's impersonation. Doing a Rivers impression. Listen, listen, boy, listen, boy. listen, guys. Yeah. Listen, I screamed a lot when I was younger. I don't know. You know, I I think Doc's a, a I think Doc. You know, he's a very. He's not a a Stan Van Gundy. He's not a Jeff Van Gundy, and he's very talented as a coach. But I just think the personality of Doc. He's not pushy. So in not being pushy, people practice bad habits throughout seasons. And because you're not pushy and, you know, guys just do what they want to do. And when it, it starts to show in the playoffs, and that's the that's the bad thing about the situation with Doc. You know, one of the rumors that we're hearing with the head coaching vacancy for the Sixers is former Raptors coach Nick Nurse. But don't you think that would be a downgrade going from Doc to a nurse? Yeah. I mean, they both won a championship. Doc don't have more championships than him. Yeah, but, you know, as a man who suffers from a heart condition, I just want to know, you know, who would you <laughs> rather see? You know, if they say the doctor's out, here's a nurse. Wouldn't that bother you? Yeah. No, no because nurses do more work. Oh, wow. You have respect for nurses. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, you do been, more work. This is a man who, who you you have the experience here. Yeah, you do. hospital record. Yeah, you do. But just back to the Sixers. Yeah. You know, people are saying the Sixers season was a failure. But when you look at it, Joel Embiid won a title. Yeah, he won the, the title. A scoring title. A scoring title that counts. is harder to win. Yes. You got to beat the yeah. 600 people in the league, even people on your own team. Wouldn't you agree? Scoring title. More impressive. Than NBA title. Get out of here. Are you serious? What are you guys on? Dope oh. dog food. What? You have your mind? Excuse me. Title. Yeah. Oh, like, title. Hold on. Yeah. I don't want you to get too upset. Yeah. Here. We can Coutinho. tell your blood pressure is like one thirty six over eighty two. Hold on. Let's bring it back food. down. Which one is it? Do dope or dog food? Which one is it? I'm trying to figure. Are it you out. kidding me? He had to beat out five hundred players in the league. He doubled your score. Yeah. Joel What was your career high in the yeah, season? Fifteen. Exactly. He had thirty two. Yeah. No, my career high in the season is twenty two. Uh, was that heartbeats? Heartbeats? 22 heartbeats per season? <laughs> yeah, that's what we're talking here. <laughs> okay, listen, I'm going to tell you this. What? How did that work out with you being the, the, the scoring leader? How did that doesn't work out? Matter. Tell me how that doesn't work matter. Doesn't matter. We, we, we got, got a title. title already. What do you mean you know, it don't matter? Doesn't matter. What do you mean it don't matter? You brought it up. Yeah, this is a sore subject for you. I can yeah. tell why. Because okay. you never played for the Sixers, right? Exactly. You wish you, you did. Wish you wish you played for the Sixers. No, I do Obviously. not. No, I do not. Yeah, you don't. Uh oh, he's getting a little agitated. No, I love, I love Philadelphia. We, we probably just want to take it down a notch. Okay, okay, you know you're right. What we're going to do, we're going to move to a better topic, a more, a more positive note for you. Yep. We want to talk about 
how you almost got traded to the Knicks, right? And then this was in the late 2000s, and then they brought you in for a medical evaluation, and they found you had this heart condition. How glad yeah. at that point were you for that heart condition? Do you go back and think of the years of your life you would have lost had you had to play for such a terrible organization? Um, at the time, Dan uh, Dan Tony was the coach. I wouldn't mind playing with Dan Tony, but I, I wasn't really a fan of uh, the guy Dolan, the owner. I yeah. wasn't a fan of him. So I think I, I you know, I, I for me, truthfully, uh, I gotta be. I should have been careful of how I wish that one. Truthfully, what should you have done? I love New York. I love New York. I used to spend my summers in New York. I love Dan Tony, but I did not like the owner. He's a terrible. Terrible. Owner. He's terrible. Yeah. All right. All right. I see. I we're, good. I think we're a little calmer now. This is okay. All right. <laughs> I'm not as afraid. I was going to call EMT there for a second, yeah, but okay. we were close, but now so, we're you know, okay. So, you know, we saw you on this other show, Catino. You were talking about how Ja Morant is, is not being a good role model for flashing a gun. But hold on here. I think you're missing yep. the point. Yeah. He lives in Memphis. The team is called the Grizzlies. Yeah. Now, if there yeah. are grizzly bears running around there, well, wouldn't it be smart to carry a gun? Yeah. The Grizzlies are everywhere. <laughs> no, it's not smart to Listen. Licensed in a holster in a box, all good. I'm not saying you know you shouldn't carry a gun, but at the end of the day, you're you know you big influence. You're big exactly. influence. Exactly, you're a big influence. Okay. You're a role model. What about you're role, role models? Model. Exactly. What about what about John Wayne? Could yeah, you know? is he not a role model to you? Yeah, or Charles Bronson. Charles Bronson, John Wayne, Death yeah. Wish. Yeah, exactly. You wanted to be him. Did yeah, I watched him? Death Wish 12. I said, oh, my God, what a guy here. He doesn't take I said, nothing. That's who I want to be when yeah. I grow up after world's number one sports cast. And, yes. and, look at you, and, and look at you now. Amazing. I love it. I, I love excuse it. me? I'm sensing a little no, sarcasm. Saying, look, at, look at you now. You're not fighting... You're not fighting the fly right now. Are so you kidding me? You want yeah. to be the yeah. guy, you're not even fighting the fly. Are you kidding me? We take on the whole sports world yeah. over here. We'll take you on. Yeah, we'll take you, know you on. Are you kidding? Not, the next time I see you, I'm going to be right. putting my fist right where the sun don't shine. Because guess yeah. what, Catino? Guess what, Catino? You're getting Catinoed <laughs> from this show. You're out of here. You're done. Get out of here. You're off you're the off show. This yeah. Goodbye. See ya. Go punch a bag. We're hanging go, up the go. mobile phone. You know what? I hope you get eaten by a grizzly bear. I just go go punch a bag in the back or something. Oh, okay? get out of here! Full scope satellite. Network. Is he off the line? Jay, hang up the you, phone. You know, I wish he was more like our guest last week, and you know, just didn't show up at all. Yeah, exactly. That would have been way better. Yeah. Well, uh. Let's not let him ruin what was otherwise a terrific show as nope. usual. Of course, nope. we want to thank our new sponsor, Upside. And uh, wait, thank wait. you. Oh, Hold you on. kidding me? Definitely not an Upside here. Oh, it's our producer, producer Jay. Jay, what do you want? What corrections? What? Hurry Go. up! Go. All right. Look first. You said John Morant needs a gun to protect himself from grizzly bears running around Memphis. Yeah, bro. Yeah, the team's called the Grizzlies, bro. They're called the Grizzlies because they originally played in Vancouver. There are no grizzly bears in Memphis. Oh, yeah? Well, you know what's going to be grizzly? When I murder you. Yeah. Next time we talk bears, it's going to be where to bury your body. Boom. Oh, That's it. We're one, done. Donnie. Let's get out of here. We're there. done. No. What? Second. Why? Hurry up. You said James Harden and Joel Embiid. Combined to shoot 37% from the floor in Game 7? Yeah, bro. Horrible. Yeah, it was terrible. No. Your math is what's terrible. They took 29 shots and made 8. That's 27%. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what's going to take 29 shots? My gun at your face. Yeah. And you know who has no shot? Yo, with every woman on the planet. Oh, yeah. You're done. Let's one, get out of here. I'm done. Nope. No, no, no. What? No. Last what? one. What? What? Hurry up and go. And, and I can't believe I'm actually bringing this up. But you said Three's company didn't become a hit until they got rid of Mr. Roper. Yeah, bro. Yeah, Team Furley, bro. Yeah. 
as usual, that's wrong. It was the number two show in America when they still had Mr. Roper. Oh, yeah? Well, uh, they're going to call me Mr. Roper after I hang you. Yeah. When you open your mouth, this becomes the number two show, if you catch my drift. Oh, Boom! Great one, Tony. You're That's done. done. You suck. Yeah. Oh, he oh, shit. You know what's also great, Tony? What's Look that, at this. The NFL's hottest free agent coming on the show next week. Just booked Super Bowl no way. legend Nick Foles will be wow, here. Wow, terrific. Wow, terrific. You know, Maybe we'll help him find his next team, you know, yeah, all the teams exactly. they listen to the show. So they'll yep. be tuning in. And uh, we know you'll be tuning in to our YouTube. Subscribe there. Follow yep. us on TikTok. Go back We're all listen over. to the old pod episodes. And Tony, great job as always. Same to you, Paulie. Another flawless show. There you go. We'll see you people next week. See ya.